Leonardo da Vinci, one of the greatest painters during the Renaissance period, has been quoted with saying, A painter should begin every canvas with a wash of black, because all things in nature are dark, except where exposed by the light. And that light that Mr. Da Vinci was talking about was SpongeBob SquarePants. I think it's safe to say that SpongeBob cured my sadness. Or at least some of it. There are few things in this world that are as universally loved as SpongeBob. Following the everyday antics of SpongeBob and his friends, the show has been on the air for over 20 years, becoming an $8 billion franchise, amassing such a loyal fan base, along with so many video games, three theatrical movies, merchandise out the wazoo, and an adult remake. Alrighty then, let's get her done! <laughs> Shut the f up! I wish I could unsee that. SpongeBob was on top of the world, and we were his loyal subjects. But, with anything successful, there's always bound to be ripoffs. Silly what day! You just blowing from Stupid Town? Shows that rip off the formula entirely while being completely incompetent as to what made the show amazing in the first place. And that cartoon in question today is Coconut Fred's Fruit Salad Island. Woo! Neptune help us. So, uh, remember this show? All Amusatel guests receive free Coconut Fred bathtub toys. Yeah, probably not, and you're better off so. Coconut Fred, or as he's otherwise known as, Cocos Nucifera Frederick was an American-Canadian animated TV show airing on Kids WB. Yeah, this was a Warner Brothers production, the same company that, like, kind of invented the Looney Tunes. So unlike a lot of rip-off products, today we're actually dealing with some pretty big fish here. Get it? Fish? I'm sorry. The cartoon made its debut on September 17th, 2005. 2005 pretty much being the peak of SpongeBob's popularity, with the release of the first movie coming out just a year earlier. A lot of SpongeBob diehards, myself included, feel like the golden era of the show ended around 2005 to 2006. So, in that sense, Coconut Fred had the potential to be a spiritual successor to SpongeBob, handing down the crown to another tropical island character. But in reality, it was more like Coconut Fred attempting to steal the crown and then proceed to take a crap on it! I mean, heck, just look at their character designs. A tropical island item, wearing square pants, big beady eyes, always smiling, and uh... Oh, instead of two big front teeth, Coconut Fred has everything except his two front teeth. Creative. Coconut Fred takes place on a tropical island inhabited exclusively by talking fruit. Already, what a genius concept. It's literally like the show is trying to take place on that island that shows up during the SpongeBob intro. So I guess the best way to kind of dissect the show is to check out episode one. No news is good news. Coconut Fred becomes a news reporter. So the episode starts with... Everybody, the sun came up again! How great is that? Okay, pause! We've already ripped off the first scene in the first episode of Spongebob! You know, where Spongebob's blowhorn wakes him up and he jumps to the heavens screaming that he's... Naked! And then has that funny bit where he needs to lift the stuffed animal weights. Fred also jumps into the heavens screaming something and then also proceeds to do something random. In his case, it's playing the drums. I, I guess he's a drummer. Character development! We're then introduced to Mr. Mel Greenrind. Green... Rind? Uh, he's a talking watermelon. Why don't we take a moment to read the rules? He's kind of the island enforcer, making sure everyone follows the rules. He's angry, miserable, hates our main character, and he's Squidward. No! I can't take it anymore, Fred! Coconut Fred also works at a place called The Nut Hut. I, I couldn't think of any place to put that information, and it'll probably get me <laughs> anyway, so thanks. So more like, epic randomness pursues, and we're introduced to another character, Bingo Cherry, who's honestly probably the only likable character in the show. Gee, Fred, I don't know. Uh, I think I might just rest today. 
His voice reminds me of Ike from South Park, who's literally voiced by Trey Parker's young daughter. One, two, three. We then get some more randomness. Coconut Fred shoots a glue gun at people. It's it's absolutely hilarious. Where we're then introduced to Slip and Slide, Coconut Fred's best friends who are really stupid. I have a shirt with potatoes on it. I got a sock puppet. Doobity doo. Oh man, an idiot best friend. That's very original. Okay, so we're like three minutes into this nine minute episode and nothing involving Coconut Fred becoming a news reporter has happened. A third into this episode and we've just had random hijinks. It eventually happens and what a surprise, there's nothing of note. You see, the problem with this cartoon is that it's a corporate old person's view of what they think SpongeBob is. Some old corporate person sees Spongebob, and all they see is a wacky ADHD character screaming and being le random XD. Trying to appeal to the five-year-olds that were playing whatever the equivalent of Fortnite was in 2005. Give the viewer no time to breathe! Always have Fred say or do something wacky and crazy! <laughs> the reality, however, is that Spongebob is not just a wacky idiot. At least, he wasn't before. Go back to early Spongebob, before 2005. What made him so lovable wasn't the fact that he was a half-wit being random. It was because he was the embodiment of the childhood spirit, while being an adult. He works a job and lives on his own. But look at almost any episode of Spongebob. His situations and issues were always pretty deep and mature. For example, the famous episode, Ripped Pants. Spongebob and Sandy are enjoying a nice day on the beach, until Larry the protein shake drinking lobster shows up and flexes his muscles, which impresses Sandy and gets Spongebob a little jealous. Now, early on in the series, there was always the hint and possibility that Spongebob and Sandy were love interests. I mean, come on, he almost died of dehydration because he didn't want to inconvenience her! That's true love! Anyway, Spongebob's reaction to this is to rip his pants and become a self-deprecating clown, having everyone laugh at his own expense. This goes on for a while until he takes it too far, having everyone turn against him. The episode ends nicely with a beautiful song that I've downloaded onto my iPod Touch at least 15 times. But pay attention to these specific lyrics. Now I learned a lesson I won't soon forget. So listen and you won't regret. Be true to yourself, don't miss your chance, and you won't end up like the fool who ripped his pants. The moral of the episode and the song is a warning. SpongeBob is naturally a funny person. Remember, at the beginning of the episode, SpongeBob was already making Sandy laugh by simply being himself. It wasn't until he felt threatened and insecure by Larry that he felt like he had to take another extreme because he didn't want to lose Sandy. But by doing so, he ultimately did run her off, simply by being somebody who he wasn't. Being yourself is all it takes to genuinely attract people to you. But by pretending to be something you're not because you think it's better than who you are will only cause you to become the biggest loser on the beach. That's pretty deep for a show meant for kids involving a talking sponge. Honestly, I could make videos like this for every episode of pre-2005 Spongebob, but I digress. The point being is that Spongebob tackles mature and heavy themes, but with a light-hearted and innocent look at them. But if Coconut Fred had an episode like this, the punchline would be, Ha ha, I ripped my pants! Look at my underwear! With no underlying themes or messages. Now, I get it. A cartoon doesn't have to be deep in order for it to be good. If we like the characters, for example, then we'll most likely enjoy any adventure they go on, no matter how big or small they may be. So, how are the characters here? It's got five loopy loops, a water tube, a three mile tall vertical free fall, and snack trays in every car! They are so one dimensional, they're almost zero dimensional. If you can do that. Every character has one personality trait. Annoying. Like, what do we know about Coconut Fred? Seriously, if you want to watch every episode and analyze his character, he always boils down to, I like to have fun. <laughs> Yeah, that's not funny. 
Coconut Fred himself was voiced by Rob Paulson, who also voiced Bubsy. It's me, the Prince of Personality, Bubsy. Now, I'm not gonna hate on the guy, because he was just doing his job, and he is an incredibly talented actor, providing the voice for one of my favorite anime characters, Carl Weezer. Are you going to finish that croissant? Now, I'm not a hater, alright? I try to look for the positives and everything. So, is there an upside to Coconut Fred's existence? Yes. Season 2. Oh my gosh, how is there a season 2? Season 2, Episode 2, Sir No- <laughs> Oh my gosh! Sir, not a lot. Fred and the boys are playing video games and then hits a button on his controller that says real and turns their world into Final Fantasy VII. Dang, this Final Fantasy VII remake looking good though. Now, is this actually a clever episode utilizing references and nods to the game? No, of course not! We need more time dedicated to Fred saying stupid things! Your nose with your tongue. <laughs> Coconut Fred's Fruit Salad Island would come to an end on May 27th, 2006, being on the air for less than a year, but surprisingly having two seasons with 13 total episodes. There wasn't really too much to dive into considering the show was about as deep as a 14 year old's Tumblr post. Coconut Fred is the perfect example of a show that was created simply for profits. Steven Hillenburg, the creator of Spongebob, was actually a marine biologist before creating the show. It was a pure passion project that came 110% from the heart. Coconut Fred's inspiration came from the profits that Spongebob had, and rightfully so, died a death that no one cared about. Where the spirit does not work with the hand, there is no art.